So today is a bit of a first for me, to be honest. For the first time in my whole life, in nearly 27 years, I'm on my own on this island. There's no one else here. Welcome to Owlskerry, a small island in Scotland where I grew up with only my parents, two brothers and a flock of seaweed-eating sheep for company. The island has a fascinating history. Even the name Owlskerry comes from Old Norse, the language of the Vikings. But for nearly 50 years, it's just been my family here. My parents built a beautiful and fulfilling life, but as I was about to be reminded, this remote place brings many, often unexpected challenges. This is On to Other News, Episode 8. In the mid-1970s, my dad Simon came to Orkney in pursuit of a meaningful way of life. He initially worked on a neighbouring island, learning to farm, until the opportunity came to have a flock of his own here. My mum Teresa also came to Orkney to learn traditional farming skills, and since then she's been the driving force behind the wool and sheepskins business they've built for over 40 years. We live completely off-grid here, with no roads and no link with the facilities on the main Orkney Island, except across an often very rough stretch of the North Sea. Sometimes that has its drawbacks. Dad had to be airlifted today by air ambulance into Kirkwall. Nothing hugely serious, but uncomfortable bowel situation. Won't go into any more detail than that. We called the out of hours doctor and they actually spoke to the air ambulance service who said they were on the neighbouring island just over there in Stronzi with a different patient and so we had no warning really, literally a two minute warning that they were going to come over here. Mum and I packed a bag for her and dad to take in and had to say a rush goodbye and they got flown off um, into Kirkwall. The wind was blowing very strongly then, it's gone down now, um, as was forecast. It was very strong gale force winds. So I was suddenly left here for the first time in my whole life in nearly 27 years of growing up here and, and spending time here. I'm on my own on this island, there's no one else here. Neither of my brothers have ever experienced this, being alone on this island and it does feel a bit strange. I don't really know what to do with myself. I'm trying to get some of the jobs done and um, pick up a few of the pieces from the last few days of, of Dad's um, most recent health issue, which has exacerbated, and hopefully in the short term, his Alzheimer's. So my only company are the sheep, just down there, eating the seaweed on the low tide as the sun goes down. It's a very, very special place, Alskerry as hopefully you've seen over the course of this series. But um, a very unexpected moment to be here alone. But uh, how wonderful it is that it's the Scottish Charity Air Ambulance. What an amazing thing that is, that people's donated money and lottery funding and all those sorts of things that have meant that these paramedics who are based in Aberdeen and a pilot could come here to be so reassuring to Dad, to help us understand the problem to put him in there in the helicopter and um, take him into Kirkwall where he's getting the right treatment and the right help. Just immensely grateful for that, just immensely grateful even with all the difficulties and all the remoteness of this place there are always still people that you can call upon and that is an amazing thing when you live somewhere so isolated, so remote, uh, makes a huge difference to life here, just unbelievable difference. So yeah, mixed emotions, but very privileged to be here. What an amazing place. Uh, I'm not sure how long I'll be here on my own for, probably a couple of days, all being well. After hearing that Dad was safely in hospital in Kirkwall on the main Orkney Island, I made myself some dinner. Fresh lobster from the creels I put out on the low tide makes for a delicious risotto. We'll try and get some jobs done. We'll try and keep up with the, the relent, unrelenting um, amounts of work there is to do on a, on a remote farm. Um, at this time of year and just enjoy it as much as I can really. 
I really have loved all your comments and questions on my videos in this series so far. Please keep them coming and do subscribe for more. If you'd like to help with the costs of making these videos, please consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description. I've been asked a lot about our power system on the island. We run wind turbines from this tower my dad built. We also have solar panels. They all feed into a set of 12 volt batteries and an inverter so we can run appliances on 240 volts. We also have a generator as you saw in another video that provides the power for high demand jobs like combing sheepskins and the washing machine in the house. It may be a stunning place, but life here is not simple, especially when you're on your own. It is a lot, and I have immense respect for my dad and my mum for having spent so many years here when they were the only people here. Quite often my dad's been the only person here over the years in the winter when he'd spend months here on his own managing all of this. And he's always loved it. It's what kept him going, the joy of the solitude and the being around the sheep and everything else. So I'm gonna make the most of that too in honor of him. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a moment this evening. Just thinking I'm on an island that's three quarters of a mile long and there is no one else here. There is no one, no human within three, three and a half miles of me. Yeah, it's quite something. I kept myself busy while I was alone. You saw my dad doing some scything earlier in the series. Well, I'm not unwilling to put some hours of effort into that too. Lots of you have suggested we get goats to eat the thistles, but with a flock of 600 sheep, we've already got our work cut out. And I think it's unlikely they would thrive in this often very harsh climate. Next year, hopefully, we'll get the thistles cut before they seed. Thankfully, the brilliant NHS fixed my dad up in the local hospital, and when the weather improved, mum and dad appeared on the horizon again. Fun things like going out in our 16-foot boat to fish or exploring the caves along the island's cliffs is too often at the bottom of the priority list. But when visitors come, it's good motivation to get it in the water. When my cousin Charlie and his wife Claire came in the summer, we used their help to move the boat from its protected spot next to one of the barns where it stays in the winter to the beach where it lives in the summer. We only bought a quad bike around five years ago, so this job used to be done by hand. This method is much easier, as you can imagine. The weather in this part of the world can be very unpredictable. You have the odd day when the sea is completely calm, and then you have days like this, where the wind is so strong that even hunkered down on the ground with my camera, I just couldn't get a stable shot and had to give up on filming that day. Today's weather change isn't so dramatic, but it did go from being lovely and sunny to this, incredibly foggy. We thought we'd launch the boat anyway and get it moored out until the fog lifted, but then I couldn't get it to start. 
It turned out that Dad had tidied away the kill switch cord, which stops the engine from running if it's removed for safety reasons. I didn't notice this, so I spent ages trying to work out what was wrong with the engine. The next day, we found the crucial part in Dad's briefcase, and I got the engine running again. Unfortunately, by the time we got a chance to go out in the boat, Charlie and Claire had left the island, and family friend Mira arrived in their place. On a flat, calm day like this, there is always so much to see and to feel when out on the boat. Seabirds, the seals, and on some very special occasions, you can spot some other wonderful creatures. This year was the best ever for seeing cetaceans in Ausgeri. It's a dolphin, Dad. For some reason, Dad is convinced they're orcas, but today we've bumped into a pod of Risso's dolphins feeding just off the island. We normally only fish in places near the house, but today we've decided to go on an orbit of the island. It's not that often that you get such calm days here with no motion along any of the coast, so it's great to make the most of it. When we were kids, my mum rarely came fishing with us because she was always cooking, catching up with the work required to keep the wool business going, or even preparing lessons for homeschooling. She admits now that she also enjoyed the opportunity to let Dad look after us for a couple of hours and have a moment's peace. Mackerel are by far the most fun to catch because they fight so hard. Oh, hi, Seal. Hi, buddy. And mackerel are also a beautiful fish, both to eat and to look at. When you're on a shoal, you tend to catch a decent number of them in a short space of time. We'll cook a few tonight for dinner, as fresh as can be. The rest will either be put in the deep freeze for a later date, or I'll salt them down to use as bait for my lobster pots. Once we bring the lines in, it's off to explore the caves along the island's west coast. Sea caves have an almost magical quality to them, yeah, the sounds of the water reverberating off the rocks, the way the light reflects through the water and onto the walls, and the sounds of birds on their nests nearby. These cliffs are also an important nesting site for so many varieties of seabirds. Kittiwakes, black guillemots, razorbills and fulmers all have their homes here.
and shags are also very successful. They're a striking bird, a cousin of the cormorant. Hundreds of them dive in and out of the water all along here, fishing for their own dinner. Once we're back on dry land, we use a hand winch to bring the boat to a safe level on the beach. It's something that we could now use the quad bike for, but this is how we've always done it. Dad dug this winch post into the beach by hand several decades ago, and it's held firm that whole time, despite the bashings it gets from every winter storm. Going out in our boat has always been one of my favorite things to do here. As a kid, I was always badgering Dad to go fishing, now that I take responsibility for a lot more of the work here, I understand better why Dad used to take some persuading. Keep going. But I reckon it's always worth the effort. Every day, rain or shine, there is always work to do here, whether it's looking after the flock of sheep or maintaining the miles and miles of fencing. But this summer, Mum and I wanted to make sure we took time to enjoy the beauty of the island and not let the stresses of caring for my dad or managing the farm completely take over. Careful. Filming and editing this series has helped me with that too, and I'm so grateful to have been able to share it with you. Thanks so much for watching this episode. I'll see you on the next one.